Okay, just to complete the thought on uh, on file attachments, um, you know, I can browse and I can upload a, a PDF, and it's basically going to be the same deal. I upload that, and again, with my screen resolution being such that this is large enough for you guys to see, there, there's a little bit extra scrolling that I have to do that you probably normally wouldn't. But I'm going to put my cursor where I want to insert that file. I'm going to scroll back down. And I'm going to click the insert button. I'm going to come back up here. And again, uh, I'm going to go back and start, sort of take the first approach that I did the, with the Dr. Austin image of just typing over this link. Um, you know, 2010, 11 phone list, parentheses, PDF. Now, a, a word about accessibility, or maybe a few words about accessibility. Um, again, there's, there's kind of two levels of accessibility. Uh, that we're dealing with. W one is, uh, again, this issue of folks who are blind or sight impaired and the, and the screen reading software that they use and the issue of whether they can get into these files, um, you know, Excels, uh, Excel spreadsheets, um, PDFs, Word documents, and so forth. And, you know, right now, probably the way those are being um, created and output, th those files are going to be largely inaccessible. Now, Office of Disability Accommodations is working on some training materials that's going to... Um, uh, provide some information about how you can go back in and do some styling on Word documents and output them in such a way that they would be accessible. And so it's it's going to be some a little bit of reformatting and restyling. And um, again, you know, this reliance on on file attachments and documents is is um, is something we need to um, try to start working away from or moving away from as much as we can. And again, that option of pasting um, the paste from Word dialog box or the, or the icon in that formatting palette is going to allow you an option to do that. Um, the other nice thing, though, about this um, this output of um, or this restyling of Word documents is that you can then save those uh, from Word to a PDF. And, and there's a couple different ways to do that in um, depending on whether you're in a, a Mac environment or whether you're in a Windows environment, and I think ODA will cover that in their training materials when those are available. But you can output a PDF that's going to be accessible and keep those characteristics that you've created on the Word side. Um, the, the second accessibility issue really doesn't have to do with disability, but it has to do with software. So if someone doesn't have uh, the Microsoft Office suite and doesn't have Excel or doesn't have Word, um, you basically have made this content inaccessible to them. And so, you know, for folks who, who value sort of the open source movement where they don't want to buy software, um, going with the PDF route is probably going to be the, the most optimal way to do this. And so it, it's very likely, uh, after maybe a little additional discussion, that we're going to restrict the, um, the ability to upload a Word document. And um, I think for Excel, there's probably not a good... Um, a good uh, substitute right now, uh, not necessarily a good way to handle that, but because you can output Word to PDF and because Adobe provides a, pr a free um, PDF reader in Acrobat and, and there are other open source options, we think that that's probably going to be the best way to go is, is um, once these accessibility materials or training materials are available, create an accessible Word document, output it as an accessible PDF, and let's go with uploading the PDF uh, rather than the Word document uh, if there's no other alternative.